same shit. They treated us like criminals. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the worst scum on the earth. But for everybody that's seen this, everybody that has seen this the last four days, they see that ain't true. But he's still trying to save face, like, oh, this shit's about to go down. It's still gonna happen. And the reason I bring this up, and I'm really worked up about it, is because motherfuckers are still asking, why are we marching? This is a publicity stunt. Is this a fucking publicity stunt? The four owners of the property have been doing shows for, well, the one dude, Howard, has been doing shows for like 40 years, and he said he's never seen no shit like this. You know what I mean? Where there's no reason for what they're doing, but yet they're still coming in here full force for no fucking reason. Well, I want to say to that that cop, that one fucking cop, and it's not all of them. Check it out. It's not all of them. You know what I mean? Because there's cops on the ground and like, that's just cool shit. They're just chilling. It's that one ninja, man, and he's got mad fucking egg on his face. Mad fucking egg on his face right now. And for the cops in the audience, go back and tell them. Mad fucking egg on your face, because what have we done to warrant this shit that you're putting us through? What have we done? Alright, now I wanted, I wanted to bring to the positive. Now, this year we got a lot of cool shit, you know. I don't know how, how many of y'all seen the movies on the water. Ninja in a shark suit swimming around. <laughs> and I've already seen him in the water tipping motherfuckers over. <laughs> we have the fucking Reno Riders coming and throw a bomb ass party. <laughs> Even though they got oppressed by the police again. Now, y'all know the Reno Riders, the coolest motherfuckers on the planet. <laughs> Shut them down. But that's the thing, you can't shut Juggalos down, you can't shut us down. Because we got all the heart and courage out of any motherfucker, man. We've been through it too many times. And like, you, when you get beat down and oppressed, you can either lie down and get weak, or you can fight. And Juggalos are fighters. We've been fighters, we fight for everything we've ever had in this world. We have to fight for it. Because you all motherfuckers, man, we're all the same. This is it, man. This is a family. It's the true fucking family. And this is our family reunion. So, man, to that one fucking asshole cop at the top of the chain, y'all tell him, man, fuck you! Fuck you! Yo, and I want to give up props to another cool-ass event, the Juggalo Yacht Club. Yo! Yo, you know, they just reached out to us and they're like, hey, man, we want to do our, our own events. Can we hook this up? And it was just the coolest thing, and those two parties ended up being the highlights of this year's gathering, in my opinion. I mean, when I looked out from my, when I came out of the backstage area, fucking doing, working the gathering and all that, I looked across the water, all I saw was like 500 motherfuckers on the beach, fucking jumping, I, I didn't even know what the fuck was going on. But it looked like this hell, and that's all I've been hearing about. So. You know, moving forward, I just think it's really cool. Like, every gathering keep evolving. Uh, if you got new ideas, you want to submit stuff you want to do at the gathering, we're open for it. Because this is like, you know, like, check this out. We did, we did an event called the Dark Carnival Games Con. And that whole event was ran all by Juggles. Juggles provide gaming tournaments for Juggles. And it was a totally new experience, and it was so dope because most of the time in, in the events in the past, there was psychopathic putting on the entire thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're just like, come up with all ideas. But that's the hype thing, like, moving forward is like, you know, you all come up with some ideas. You got some dope ass events you want to run, shoot in an email, you know what I'm saying? And we'll work together to make it dope. And the Dark Carnival Game Con, this one that just summed it up best. He said at the Dark Carnival Games, instead of us sitting there looking up and watching ninjas on stage, we were watching each other. And that was a dope-ass quote, and I'll never forget it. It's like, and so that's dope. Anyway, 
So that's all I had to say, man. I know there's bones at this year's gathering. The police have been a super bone. The heat has been a bone. But other than that, man, I think it was a super fresh event. And, and, and to, to all the drummers that came out, get all the shit. And we're gonna keep moving on. No matter what they do, this is gonna keep moving on. And they try to shut it down every year. The cop, that one cop, that's all he kept saying. He's gonna shut this down. Like if anything fucks up, he's gonna shut it down. Just nothing but fucking idle threats. Is it the ponytail guy? <laughs> In the news. Fuck twisted! I'm having trouble reading my own notes. All that punch I can decipher it. Alright, check it out. I want to talk about uh, the Carnival of Carnage show in Detroit. Check this out, man. I know tickets are mad fucking expensive, and what really fucking sucks is people talking about that and not talking about why they're so fucking expensive, all right? Again, when ICP recorded Carnival of Carnage, there was three members of the band, all right? Three members of ICP, and you can hear them on Carnival of Carnage as well as Dog Beats, our first two ever releases. There was three members of ICP. The third member was John Kickjazz, all right? Shaggy's older brother. Right? John decided to leave ICP right as we began to press the Carnival Carnage album. That was a, a pretty bad time to leave, but because we couldn't afford to go back to the album and take him off it, and it was just a, a choice he made, all right? That turned out not to be a good one, you know? And unfortunately, John passed away, how long ago? Uh, a year and a half ago? Yeah, he passed away two years, years ago. About two years ago. But um, his story is pretty fucking remarkable. And the reason why tickets are so expensive for the Carnival Carnage show in Detroit is the venue only holds 600 people. And we're doing the Carnival Carnage album at a venue called the L Club, which is on Burner Avenue in uh, Southwest Detroit, Burner. right across the fucking street from Clark Park, all right? In the fucking heart of where Insane Clown Posse's origins come from. I mean, you cannot be on a better location than right there. And taking John's place, doing John's lyrics, is Shaggy's other brother, his younger brother, who raps as Trey Pine. Chop Shop. With the group Chop Shop. Alright? He will be taking John's place, wearing John's face paint, and doing John's lines, and who better suit it, right? Who can fill those shoes, right? Right. And we're only gonna do the Carnival Carnage album one fucking time. There will be no tour on it. No, no tour, again. no fucking second show. One fucking show, all right? And all proceeds are going to a documentary about the life of John Kickjazz, all right? Things nobody knows, all right? And that documentary is very, very important to us, and we want it done with fucking class. We want it done with mad amounts of dignity, and that's where the money is going. We're not fucking paid like some of you might think. Not even hardly at all. Hardest, like you hardly think pay. ever from paying. Any money we happen to generate goes away when we have the gathering. All right? We quickly lose it because it's a fucking money losing event, but it's a karma gaining event and worth it. And the Carnival Carnage show is about respecting John and it's about creating this documentary. 
And also, as I'm writing what's called the treatment for the documentary, I decided that I wanted to include everything from our history. Okay, if you've ever read the book Behind the Paint, it talks about John, but I, I have to admit something right here. I'm gonna be a fucking man, and I'm gonna admit something. I think, when I wrote Behind the Paint, I think I purposely downplayed John's role in ICP's origins. I downplayed it because I was still fucking salty that he quit the group and left us when he chose to do that. I was still upset, and I said to myself, no reason to go into all these extra stories about John because he's not a factor anymore. And he didn't deserve that. And so with this documentary and with my treatment that I was writing for the documentary, which is basically explaining what the documentary is gonna be like, I decided to include every fucking detail of our relationship and the creation of ICP coming from age 13 when I met John and Joey to age 20 when John left the group, okay? Those are fucking really pivotal years in a ninja's life and I'll tell you why. Those are the years you first step away from being a little kid following your mom and dad or whoever takes care of you. Just being a little fucking kid to actually becoming your own person. You choose what music you like, you choose who your friends are, you choose how you want to present yourself. Those are fucking the most important years, I believe, of any ninja's life. 13 to 20. It's also when you first get skins for the first time. All kinds of shit, man. And that's, and that's Hopefully. when John was my fucking best friend, Joey's brother, he was everything in those fucking essential years. And we're gonna tell his story correctly, respectfully, and uh, and as I'm writing this treatment, I realized this is a fucking book I'm writing. And so I decided I'm gonna fucking finish it as a book. So not only will there be a documentary, there'll also be a book called The Third Clown. And it's the story of John Chisholm. I want to tell one more little story. I want to tell one more little story. This is like, it's not quote for quote how it's written in the book, but I want to tell you a funny story about getting some skins, some men for the first time. Because the first time John ever got some skins, it was in my bedroom, all right? With him. I'm going to tell you how this went down. And it, it might not be funny, I don't know. It was funny to us, though. But, um, down the street from my house where I lived with my mom, I lived in the attic and I turned it into a bedroom and I had to pull the stairs down and it was a rickety fucking stairway. I had to pull down, bolt down and then I could cr climb up the fucking thin rickety stairway up to my bedroom, right? So there's this little hottie who lived down the street who was what used to be called a burnout, which is a fucking heavy metal band, long hair, we call them wolves, right? We always call them wolves. That's the oh, other stories. They, they don't pretty much exist anymore, but they used to, like, the girls yeah, used they to. do, motherfucker. <laughs> they, they, they do I see them all over. I fucking love wolves. I'm talking about, like, fucking hair metal. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Poison? Fucking yeah. Yeah. You know fucking spandex? Fucking makeup? Dudes would have the same exact haircuts as the women. You know, teased up poofs and shit. Anyway. This little wolf chick lived down the street, and I always thought oh, these, these, these wolf chicks in the neighborhood are considered hood rats. I don't know if you ever heard that. Oh, <laughs> and I, I fucking used to want to fuck this girl so badly, but I didn't know about actually fucking anybody because I had never fucked anybody in my life. No girl ever, nobody ever. Not that I, I'm not so special. Anyway, so uh, this is the first days of when you're fucking calling girls. You know, that those first experiences. You, can you remember that about your life? When you're actually stepping to girls for the first time? So, I had invited this girl over, and this was probably the third time she came over, and um, I could tell she was not digging me. It just was not going to jump off. But John, sitting on the couch, emulating his fucking stud the aura, she was all about him, I could tell it. So I immediately thought, well, maybe I can hook this up for John. 
and John will get some skins and he can tell me what it was like, you know what I'm saying? So I started talking to her and I'm trying to fast talk her and I'm like, look, you don't know him, he don't know you, you guys don't have to face each other again, there won't be no awkwardness at school, you go to different schools, just let him hit it, you know, I mean, what's it going to hurt, you're just both enjoying each other's good looks, do you think he's attractive? She's like, He's all right. And I'm like, John, she's a babe, right? John's like, yeah. Mac and I'm like, she's just, just fucked, man. So let it jump off. And so I actually talked her into it, and she was down. So they went up into my rickety fucking bedroom, and I assume he was plowing, right? Now, this is the part of the story that don't make much sense, but my stepdad came home from work, and for early, and for some fucking reason, which I don't understand, but apparently I wasn't allowed to have a girl over or something because I was scared to death that we had a girl upstairs. Which doesn't make no fucking sense now. I would be so Cause you're a kid, you knew you were trying to fuck him. But I know, but if my son had a hottie over at 16, I would be fucking proud of him. I wouldn't be mad at him. I don't understand that. But apparently I wasn't allowed, okay? Maybe I was 15. I don't know. But um, I ran upstairs and banged down the bedroom door and I said, John, oh, uh, Ron's home. That's my stepdad. I was like, Ron's home. You got to get her out of here, man. And there was no answer. And I knocked again, banging on the fucking door. John, no answer. Finally, I said, fuck it. What can I do? I'm seriously stressed out. The car's pulling up in the driveway. He's getting out with his 40s in the brown bag. And I'm like, fuck, we got to get this bitch out of here. So I opened the door. And I ran in, and I saw the two of them having sex, paying me no mind at all. I'm fucking banging on the door. First thing he did, he didn't give a fuck about you. He was like, or Rod. He was in a robotic motion. That my presence meant nothing to either one of them. And I'm still there. Then where this pole is, I'm right here, and he is just. I'll never forget it. First time I ever saw anything like that in real life. It was right there. And he wouldn't stop. I'm like, John! John! And he was just looking at her, stroking. And I, they didn't stop. They were right there, you know what I'm saying? I had to push him off her physically. The only way I was going to stop that shit from going down was to fucking physically intervene. So I had to shove him off her. Now this next part of the story I'm not very happy about. But this is how it went down, alright? I remember seeing her naked. And for some fucking stupid reason, I did not snap shot that image with my brain for later usage. So I don't remember much about it, which I should have. And I'm still mad at myself for it. But she was naked. And I turned around giving them time to get dressed probably 20 seconds. And when I turned back around, she had her fucking extra tight stonewashed fucking burnout jeans about halfway up. And her bra, I think, was on. But I was so fucking scared of my stepdad, who was pretty brutal at that time. He wasn't very nice then. I had to, I, listen, I'm not proud of this. This is what happened. I was 15 or 16. But I grabbed her by the fucking poof. Her hair was all poof. I grabbed her by the poof and started to lead her down the rickety stairs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And no lie, I opened a side door of my house and there was like a little horse with two steps to the, to the grass. I put my foot on her ass. I didn't kick her, but I put my foot on her ass and shoved her off. <laughs> and I just remember her falling to the, to the grass and being like, fucking asshole, you know, opening the gate and walking away, you know? But she was fixing her hair in case another Burnout saw her. She didn't want to look unpresentable as she walked down the street. <laughs> burn. But what I don't understand is what I would have gotten trouble for anyway. It doesn't make any sense. But that was John's first time ever having sex. And if you remember your first time ever fucking, you fall into a strange shock where you just stare at and you don't say shit. John was in that funk for the rest of the day. And it was like he was just staring off. It was asking. He was coherent. <laughs> but he was just reflecting. Trance. 
And I didn't understand that feeling until I got my first piece and I found myself staring out the window as John was driving. Because John was also present at my first time ever. And somehow, me and John got skins two years later than him. And he's fucking two years younger than us, man. Hey. Hey. <laughs> but yeah, he was, I hung out with the other guys. What do you want? But the book is for, for people interested, for people that like the early years part of Behind the Paint, this whole book, I'd say 75% of it is all about the early years. It's just a gang of stories and questions about that and um, and everything pre-ICP all the way to the beginning of ICP to the, you know, launching the Joker cards and everything and John's role. And then it's about John's downfall, you know, and, you know, he got hooked on drugs. He ended up in a wheelchair and I saw him at Shaggy's wedding and he, he looked fucking gray, his skin looked gray. I never saw it like that. And um, and I remember it was a beautiful chapel we were at, and we were sitting there listening to the wedding, the, the preacher do his thing. It was all beautiful, the waters in the background and shit. And I remember looking behind me up the hill, and John's sitting in his fucking chair, and he's looking at the floor, and it fucking sucked, man. And, 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 and I think if he understood what he was a part of the creation of if he planted the seeds that grew into the garden, which is now the jungle of the jungle of the world. If he understood how essential his role was, he might have found more reason to live. You know what I'm saying? And by the time we realized that, I think it was too late, you know? But we're gonna do him his fucking justice and write this book and put yeah. this documentary out. And it will be out to us and us. You guys don't know. Uh, I know we just know everything about ICP, but in reality, you don't. Because there's a lot of stuff no, no. chosen to never reveal. For example, the true trials and tribulations of Shaggy Tuto, who's coming out with a book himself. And it's You know Jay, right? Like something like his car crash just now, you know, his first experience with skins. He likes to share. You know what I'm saying? A lot. I'm not so much like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, because most of it, most of it's not share worthy anyways, a lot of shit that happened, you know, because a lot of it's bad, you know what I'm saying? Stints in jail, a lot of trouble with the fucking law. I don't know if you know or not, you know what I'm saying? A lot of probation, a lot of jail time. We love you, motherfucker. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of crazy shit has happened, you know what I'm saying? I just always kind of kept it under wraps because I'm always trying to keep shit popping. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want nobody to be like, oh, man, what? what, 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 what fuck all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm standing up here for the juggle, so I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that being said, you know what I'm saying? We're just kicking it shit, you know, with the whole situation with my brother and shit and all that, you know, and we're just sitting there, you know, we're just kind of like, yo, it's hot. You know what I'm saying? Why not? You know what I'm saying? By the Paint was a great fucking book, gave a lot of insight, but it wasn't my story. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm gonna sit down with uh, with uh, this dude named Steve Miller, the same guy that uh, wrote uh, the book Juggalo. I don't know if you read it or not. Crazy fucking book, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to be sitting down with him, and we're writing a book together. And uh, I forget the name of the shit is coming out. I don't know where the fuck where Billy's at, but nonetheless, it's gonna be it's published. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be everywhere. So you're gonna go through like some weird channel to get it. You know what I'm saying or whatever. It'll be everywhere available, and it's detailed shit from my birth up to now. You know what I'm saying? And it's ICP's career from my eyes this time, you know? And a lot and of shit has never ever been told, man. Like, so much shit that'll blow your fucking wig off your head. you be like, damn, I didn't know that. Damn, I didn't every page would be something you didn't know. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about times throughout our career, you'll be like, I had no fucking clue that was happening behind the scenes. Yo, yeah, sure in this world, but it was, man. A lot of really, really fucking epic shit, man, that you're gonna re read about and hear about for the first time, man. It, like he said, his story's always been silent. He's just not as outgoing about personal shit as I sometimes am. But it's 2017. None of the rules seem to exist anymore. And fucking it's time. And I'm looking forward to reading that motherfucker in-depthly. So that's gonna be dope, man. Get ready for that, too. What's it officially called? I don't have a hundred percent telling you, it's still just a working tell, so I mean, you know what I'm saying? It'll be revealed, you know what I'm saying? Go, but that's coming out. Yeah. 
speaking of uh, coming out, so we got the Carnival Carnage show. Fuck with Okay, the Great Malenko 20th anniversary version of the album, containing a bonus CD and fucking a bunch of tracks that were left off the Great Malenko album, and uh, also a fresh fucking coffee table book. Uh, all about the Great Malingo album, which contains all sorts of fucking news and, and back, like backstage shit that happened between us and Disney, and like you can see the actual letter that where they said they they they're signing us and they approve of it, and Disney supports the same kind of policy. And then you can see the actual letter that says they're pulling the record out of stores. It's like totally contradicting the other letter. All sorts of interesting ass shit is in this coffee table book. It's gonna be this big, fat, colorful thing Ninja full of great balls. Hold up, man. Uh, come on, man. My coffee Fucking table. 20 great. years, great Malenko. What? Great. You know what I'm saying? Fuck out of my face, dog. It's crazy. Super fucking crazy. And the guy that signed us, and when we were on Jive Records, if you remember, if you read the book behind the paint, the guy that fucking signed us, Julian Raymond, the guy that signed us to Hollywood Records and got us out of our fucked up record deal with Jive Records. Anyway, we hooked up with him to do a new song, and the song is called Black Blizzard, and we got the band Cheat Trick on the song. Does anybody know Cheat Trick Hall of Fame? Yeah. It's just dope because on Malinka you got Slash from Guns N' Roses, you got Alice Cooper, you got Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols. So for the 20th anniversary version, we hooked up with another Rock and Roll Hall of Famer with the band Cheap Trick to do this song called Black Blizzard. So that's pretty fucking cool, man. It's just, you know, going with the theme of Malenko, you know what I'm saying? But that's the only new song that's going to be on the collection. The rest of the shit is all shit that was unreleased, recorded back then, you know what I'm saying? So hot out his notes are sweating. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Yo, right, uh, I want to let everybody know the fourth Joker's card from deck two will be revealed at Hollow Wicked this year. And Hollow Wicked this year will be very, very special. It's going to have a lot of very cool names on the bill. It's going to happen in Detroit. And um, we're going to reveal the next album. We're going to show the face and the name and everything at that event. So get ready because it's going to be. You know, uh, also, right after the march, we're going on the Great Malenko Tour. We're gonna go on the Malenko tour. We're gonna come to every fucking city. I don't give a fuck if you live in Bombay. We're gonna fucking play that bitch everywhere, everywhere, even Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> We're also going. This is cool. We're going back to fucking Europe. We've been there and like. 13 years or something, but we're going there with Mushroom Head, we're doing like 10 days in Europe, and right after that, we're going to Australia again, and then we're actually going to Asia. How dope is that? What? Nice. It's definitely awesome. Going to Asia, bringing the fucking wicked clowns to Asia. Yeah. So, so excited for that. That's getting me cool. Even Toledo, yes. Toledo. <laughs> oh, free shit. Usually we give out something fresh for free to you ninjas right here at the ICD seminar. Would you like some free shit? Okay, well this year is a doozy. Because we're going to get- For real doozy. Huh? It's a for real doozy. For real style. This is going to be something guaranteed to wind up on eBay for probably <laughs> a lot of money because you'll never see it pressed up again. This is a one-time deal, something we're giving away to each and every one of you for being here. And it's a full-length album on CD for the first time ever 
from a band called the Golden Goldie. <laughs> Golden Goldies. You got to understand. It's the thing about the Golden Goldies. The Golden Goldies was something that we had did with all of our homies just sitting around the studio. No, they drunk, drunk as shit. Everybody, no rappers in the vicinity besides me and him. You know what I'm saying? It, the whole thing was, all right, Mike, Greg, group of beat. Everybody, you got ten minutes to write your shit. One chance to spin it. That's it. One chance to spin it. If you fuck up, you're stuck. No, you better keep rolling, cause that's it. And everybody had to do their verse. They got one try, and we did, I think, 13 songs. So, man, everybody's getting had to be involved with being draped with gold and be golden. The golden gold is not golden, golden. man. It's like, it was recorded right after the Rhythm Box album, and it features all kinds of rush rappers. Chuck Steady's rap, Golden Graham. Billy Bill's rapping, Gold Double B. Who else is on that bitch, man? It's got everybody rapping on there who shouldn't be rapping. But they're rapping. And it's just classic. We actually did that uh, right before, uh, what you call it, came out, uh, uh, Riddle Box is when we recorded it. Yeah, but after we recorded it, but before it came out, yes. was when right. Gold Goldies was recorded. Right. Pressing time. It's been out on record. the internet for years, but it's actually now the only time we're ever going to press it up on CD from Psychopathic. And that's what we're giving to all of oh, you. And it's simply titled, yeah. Give Me Those Fucking Nuggets, Bitch. We're all punch your fucking face! <laughs> It's, give me them fucking nuggets, bitch, or I'll punch your fucking face. Yeah. 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 So I'm fucking look. Up here is it. Anyway, that's the name of the album. Short and simple. Give me them fucking nuggets, bitch, or I'll punch your fucking face. The album look, is look. for you for free today. Ooh. All right. I've got a gun. As Jump Standing was saying earlier about the police. We know it's the fucking bone, and we got to talk to you guys about this, man, because this sort of treatment is exactly why we're fucking marching. Yeah! Look, we learned a lot in the last year. We fucking learned a lot. We thought every group out there, Tech 9, fucking Twisted, we thought every group out there was hearing the same shit we hear all the time, which is about juggalos being fucked with, punished, and fucking uh, discriminated on for being juggalos. We hear about that shit every day. All sorts of situations, all sorts of shit we hear about it endlessly. We assumed everybody else that has juggalo love was hearing that similar shit. So when we put the invites out for all the bands to perform, at the, at the march, and everybody's saying no, fuck we were fucking fuck 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 You're like, you know what's happening. How the fuck did you in the bush? You know? But then we realized because ICB is so much affiliated with the Juggalos, Juggalos tell us about it and not these other artists. And so they don't understand the passion and the fucking seriousness of it, because I don't think they even ever hear shit about it. You know what I'm saying? But it's real. It's why like, you're like, being fucked with every day at your own gallery. No doubt. You know, and, and yo, just for example, you know what I'm saying? Just for example, like take an option. Love the guy, fucking awesome as a shit. But if I do the meet and greet, he don't hear Justin Bieber's meet and greet, meet and greet tell him, him about how the police fuck with them and about how they're on the gang list and all that. He don't hear that, you know what I'm saying? We do, you know what I'm saying? That's something we didn't understand at the time, you know? We thought everybody would stand up with example, one person and so many other general artists that don't hear that shit that we do, you know? And, and so, you know, at the end of the day, it don't matter who's performing at the, fight, the fucking free concerts, because we damn sure will be there, and we are going to march. I don't give a fuck whether it's 10 people, whether it's 10,000 people, we're still up in that bitch like a motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? We're fucking marching! Fuck 
nobody ever gave me shit about it. That's you. <laughs> Good for you. What about them? What about everybody who is being fucked with, man? This march. Let's have their back, man. This is bullshit. Don't you get it? If we don't do something about it, we might as well be what they say we are. Fucking inbred fucking idiots. A gang of fucking king. What? What the fuck? We might as well just be everything they say we are unless we stand up and officially say, fuck you back. Fuck you, man. Like, what better way to do it than march? We have to let the, it, you're damn right it's a publicity stunt. We have to let the nation know we're not okay with being called a fucking gang, man. Or we might as well be a gang. You get what I'm saying, right? We're fucking suing the FBI. It's been going on now probably five years. I don't know. It's been thrown out of court. We are fighting tooth and nail. Ferris, where we at, man? Where we at? This is the Juggle Lawyer right here. We're not fighting, man.
we want you to fix all the education that's out there that's for law enforcement eyes only that has